The Sunlu Filler Dryer S4 is Sunlu's latest filament dryer. Those of you who've been watching my channel for a while will know that I didn't rate the Sunlu S1 or S2 filament dryers and believed that they had some major deficiencies. I actually modified my S1 quite heavily to turn it into the product that I wanted. Have Sunlu learned lessons from its previous models or is this just a bigger version of its less than perfect predecessors? In this video, I'm going to find out. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Sunlu sent me this pre-production model which I thought was pretty brave considering how critical I'd been of their previous dryers. Sunlu also decided to stick with their previous release strategy by launching the S4 as a Kickstarter. The Kickstarter is running until the 13th of October with some great discounts for early birds. Shipping of the first orders is planned for December so there's not that long to wait if you want to buy one. If you do decide to have a look to see what's on offer then check out the link in the description. As this is a pre-production model it is possible that some of the specification could change on the production units but I expect any changes to be relatively minor. So the filler dryer S4, what is it, what does it do and why might you want one? Virtually all 3D printer filament is hygroscopic to some level. This means that it absorbs moisture from the atmosphere. Some filament is worse at absorbing this moisture than others, but personally I've seen print quality improvements with all filaments that I've dried in some sort of filament dryer. I'll demonstrate what I'm talking about later in the video, but very often I find that even brand new filaments can benefit from being dried in a filament dryer. I go into a lot more detail about the benefits of drying your filament in this video here, so I won't go into too much depth in this video. The Sunlu filler dryer is pretty unique in the filament drying world as currently it's the only model that will allow you to dry four reels of filament at a time. It not only claims to be able to dry four reels of filament but also that it can maintain a low moisture content in that filament after drying is complete. As with any self-respecting filament dryer nowadays the S4 also allows you to print with those reels of filament that it's drying as it has rollers that allow the filament to turn and eight filament outlets. These outlets all have pneumatic fittings which allow you to insert PTFE tube. This means that you can guide the filament to your printer no matter what's in the way or what kind of extruder setup you have. Heating on the S4 is provided by a 330 watt PTC heater and not one, not two, but three fans. One of these fans draws cool air in the bottom and then the other two direct the hot air out into the box to try and provide a uniform heat throughout. Sunlu are not the first to use a PTC heater and a fan and it's an idea that they've borrowed from iBoss. However, Sunlu have tried to evolve the idea and make it work with a larger space and more rolls of filament. The first thing I wanted to know is whether this heater and fan layout actually worked. Some of the more basic filament dryers just contain some form of heating element and don't give too much thought about moving that heat around the box. This often means that filament is heated unevenly. To test this out I placed a couple of thermometer probes inside the box, one in the top where I expect it to get the warmest and then one down low in a place where it looked like it would be least affected by the hot air blown out of the fans. What I wanted to see here was a quick heat up and a small difference between the two areas. I set the heating temperature to 60 degrees and then filmed a time lapse. Bear in mind that this test is with the box empty and heat up times are likely to be longer depending how much filament you put inside. After only 11 minutes the sensors hit the maximum that they got to which was 53 degrees in the top and 50 degrees in the bottom. I'm pretty impressed with only a 3 degree temperature spread but it's interesting to see that the highest temperature I saw was 53 degrees when we were requesting 60 degrees. I left this set up for around 40 minutes and the temperature spread stayed very constant and the actual temperatures fluctuated very little. I then cranked the temperature up to the Sunlu's maximum of 70 degrees and only three minutes later the temperatures topped out. This time the temperatures were 60 and 57 degrees. That three degree temperature spread was maintained but again we're seeing recorded temperatures lower than those indicated on the display. I did see a maximum of 61.7 degrees at one point but this is still a little way shy of the 70 degrees that we requested. Now if you're thinking that Sunlu are trying to con us here by saying that their filament dryer reaches temperatures higher than it actually does that's not the case. Because the S4 uses a powerful heater and then fans to blow the hot air out into the box there's always going to be a hotter area directly in front of the fans. I tested this by relocating one of the temperature sensors to the side of a filament reel and made sure it was placed directly in front of the fan. With the same 70 degree setting I saw a temperature of 83 degrees. The display temperature is therefore an average of the air temperature throughout the whole enclosure. What this does mean though is that yes you can dry filaments that need a higher drying temperature but it also means that any filament directly in front of the heaters is going to get a blast of hot air. If you don't rotate the filament at all then you could see some uneven drying. What you also need to be very careful of is setting the temperature too high for the filament that you want to dry. 
You could very easily destroy a roll of PLA by blasting it with 80 degree air, which has been a criticism of some other similar setups. You may have noticed that the S4's display also shows a humidity reading. There's an internal sensor that the S4 uses to not only show you the internal humidity reading, but it also uses this reading to maintain your filament's moisture content if you want it to. If you select mode 2 on the display, then this pre-production unit kicks in when the humidity rises to 50% and then shuts off again when the humidity level drops. Some have already pointed out that 50% humidity is probably a bit high and Sunlu are already looking at a way of reducing this to around 20-30% to on production units. To help keep the humidity down, there are also pockets in the bottom where you can put desiccant. This should help with keeping power consumption down when in humidity mode. Speaking of energy consumption, I used a Miros smart plug to monitor the energy consumption of the S4 while it was drying. The power levels fluctuated quite a bit during the drying process, but the maximum I saw was 390 watts. And after a full 24 hours of drying on full power, the S4 used 3 kilowatts of energy. That may sound quite a lot, but you'll rarely have to run the filament dryer for 24 hours solid. I only did it to get an average power usage figure, which was 125 watts per hour, which is similar to running another 3D printer. With the touchscreen display, you can also set a countdown timer of up to 24 hours. In constant heat mode, when the timer runs out, the heat turns off. You can manually dial the temperature up or down, or you can set the temperature in some filament defaults and then just switch between them, which is quicker and saves you having to remember what temperature you want for each filament. Unfortunately, you can only set a box temperature and not individual temperatures for the reels of filament that you have in there. This means that you can't dry, for instance, PLA and nylon at the same time. In this situation, I'd advise drying the two filaments independently and then putting them both in the box and switching the box to humidity mode to maintain a low humidity level. This way you'd remove all the moisture out of the filament, but you wouldn't damage your PLA by trying to dry it too hot. And now, just a quick message from this video sponsor, Skillshare. A few years ago, I had what seemed like a safe and secure nine to five office job. 3D printing was my hobby, but it didn't seem like I could turn something I loved into a career. When I was suddenly made redundant, I decided to try something different. It was time to take the plunge and see what was possible. I started with Kevin Kennedy's Learn Fusion 360 in 30 days course, and just one month later, I had the skills I needed to start designing my own 3D printed parts and begin my new career. I now run my own 3D printing and design business. Kevin's class is just one of the many related to 3D printing that you'll find on Skillshare and you can check them all out for free. The first 1000 people to use the link in the video description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. What would you be able to learn in that month? I didn't stop with one course though. Now that I found this great resource, I find myself returning anytime I want to level up in any area. Skillshare have a whole variety of classes on offer from photography to music, to cooking, to marketing. My next goal is to sort out my YouTube channel's branding, which is gonna start with a new logo. I'm currently working through Nisha B's DIY branding for beginners course. So watch this space to see what I end up with. And now back to the video. If you've seen my Sunlu Turbo Mod videos, then you'll know that I managed to dramatically increase the drying efficiency by fitting a vent and then a fan to actually blow the hot damp air out of the dryer. I tested to see how much moisture the modified box could remove from damp foam and found that I'd improved the drying efficiency more than six times over the standard unit. What I wanted to know therefore was how does the S4 compare to my modified S1. At first, knowing how much a vent had improved the efficiency of my S1, I was surprised to see that there was no external vent on the S4. When I mentioned this to Sunlu, they said that the filament holes act as a vent for any moist air. I'm not really sure how this works when you have filament feeding out four of them though. I wasn't actually completely happy with the testing methods I'd used previously and wanted something better. This time what I decided to do was design and print a set of scales which would show me when the moisture was removed from the foam. I stuck with floral foam as it proved to be a good way to control the moisture removal process and is easy to measure with a set of accurate scales. The idea with the scales is that a ball bearing counterweight will cause the scales to tip when the foam becomes lighter as the moisture evaporates. When the scales tip, I know that all the moisture has been removed. I added exactly five grams of moisture to the foam, which on its own weighs 0.5 grams. All I need to do now is time how long it takes for the scales to tip in each dryer to see how they compare. As we know that the area directly in front of the fan is hottest on the S4, I place the foam on the other side to make sure that the hot air doesn't affect our results. As the S1 only uses a simple heating element in the bottom of the box, it shouldn't matter which way around it is. 
The S1's temperature is limited to 55 degrees, which I know through testing means an internal air temperature of around 40 degrees. I cranked the S4 up to 70 degrees to see if it could compete. First, the modified S1. In previous testing, I'd focused on the best possible foam drying efficiency, which because of the different way that foam and filament gives up its moisture, probably wasn't the best testing method. Since those videos, I've tweaked the settings to maximize filament drying efficiency and not foam drying efficiency, which is why you might notice some different results from my previous tests. The modified S1 took six and a half hours to tick the scales, which actually surprised me a little bit. I thought it would be a lot quicker considering the results that I got before. However, this is just a comparison and any kind of improvement from the S4 would be very welcome. Amazingly, only two hours and 36 minutes into drying, and the scales tipped in the S4. I actually double checked by weighing the foam to make sure that nothing else was going on and sure enough, it was bone dry. As another comparison, I used the same testing method with the IBOS Cyclops, which has pretty much been the go-to filament dryer up until now. The IBOS dryer managed to tip the scales in just under three hours. The Sunlu S4 is therefore very capable at drying foam, but does this translate to filament? And if it does, how important is drying filament anyway? One fault with many of these dryers is they don't actually get hot enough to dry the moisture out of filaments like nylon and polycarbonate. To put this to the test with the S4, I devised another experiment. I chose six different types of filament, which was PLA, PETG, TPU, ASA, polycarbonate, and nylon. I cut a couple of meters off of each filament and then placed them in a special hydration chamber for a week. This special hydration chamber is basically just a box that I put water in and then left in the sun. The sealed and then heated environment ensures a high humidity content of the air and gives the filament every possible opportunity to soak up as much moisture as possible. At the end of the week, I wiped each filament dry to make sure there was no surface moisture and then wound them onto empty filament reels and printed a simple Cali cat with each one. Some of the filaments printed fine with only a little bit of stringing, but then others showed a lot more signs of moisture ingress. Once I had a print complete with each filament, I then put them in the S4 to dry for 12 hours. I dried the TPU, nylon, ASA and polycarbonate at the maximum 70 degrees. And then afterwards I did the same with the PLA and PETG, but at 60 degrees to make sure that I didn't damage them. I also weighed the filaments before and after, but this gave some spurious results, which I assume is down to using a combination of plastic and cardboard filament reels. So the results weren't really worth mentioning. What would be interesting though, is the actual print results. I did just put a nearly full roll of ASA in the filament dryer to see if it would get any lighter. And sure enough, it lost six grams in weight, but it did have a cardboard reel and I can't be sure how much of the moisture came out of the filament and how much came out of the reel. With the print test, the exact same G-code was used for both the wet and dry filament. The only difference was that the filament had been in the S4 to dry in between. As expected, a difference can be seen between the wet and dry prints on pretty much every filament, except maybe TPU. There's quite a bit of stringing on each print and I can't really say that I can see a difference between them. The PLA, PETG and ASA prints all had noticeably less stringing, but the big difference was with the nylon and polycarbonate. Both of these filaments are known for being very hygroscopic and that's exactly what I saw with these results. The polycarbonate dry print is noticeably clearer with a lot less stringing and the nylon actually looks like I've used two different materials. While still a long way from perfect, it's easy to see that the dried filament is dramatically better than when it was wet. Printing with nylon that has any kind of moisture content is clearly a bad idea. And it's really obvious that the Sunlu S4 is capable of drying these higher temperature filaments and improving print quality. Now that we've put the S4 through some thorough testing, let's look at some pros and cons of this new filament dryer. On the positive side, this is currently the only filament dryer on the market that can dry four reels of filament at a time. You can also print with those four reels of filament whilst drying too. The S4 can reach very high temperatures and it's extremely effective at removing moisture from filament. The S4 actually monitors the humidity level inside the enclosure and when in humidity mode, acts on the results to make sure your filament is kept in the best possible condition. And it has additional pockets for desiccant to help keep the moisture level down. Sunlu have also recognized that we might not only want to dry one kilogram reels of filament. The top covers are removable and Sunlu have also provided STLs for extension pieces, which will allow you to dry three kilogram reels of filament, which as far as I know, no other filament dryer does. You could also use the S4 for drying anything else that fits inside too. If you have wet shoes or gloves, you can dry those in the S4. So there are a lot of positives for the S4, but what about negatives? 
Well, as we've already discussed, the 50% humidity trigger in humidity mode is probably a bit high, but as I've said, Sunlu are already looking at this. Whilst there's only a 3 degree temperature difference between the top and bottom of the box, anything that's directly in front of one of the fans is going to get a blast of hot air approximately 10 degrees higher than the indicated temperature. As the S4 isn't split up into separate compartments, then you can't dry dissimilar filaments at the same time. If you want to dry different filaments, then it's going to take a little bit of thought. Power consumption is pretty high with the S4 if you run it 24-7, but you would need to be printing a lot to need that kind of drying power. And my last negative would have to be noise. Whilst the three fans on the S4 give great drying power, they also come with a bit more noise. The S1 and the S2 didn't have fans, so they're completely silent in operation. The iBoss Cyclops does have one fan, and the S4 is a little bit louder. I would say that the noise level is similar to something like an Ender 3 that isn't printing. Basically anything that has a couple of fans running. In conclusion then, the S4 isn't perfect, but it is a huge jump forward from the previous two models and genuinely puts Sunlu at the forefront of any filament drying options, especially if you want to dry or maintain multiple rolls of filament at one time. If like me you print with multiple machines and live in a humid environment, then the S4 is probably the very best filament drying option for you right now. If however you only have one 3D printer that you don't use very often and you have another solution for keeping your filament dry, or you just live in an environment where humidity isn't a problem, then the S4 is probably overkill. Don't forget to check out the Kickstarter link in the description if you want to grab an early bird discount on the S4. And if you're watching this video once the S4 is already on general sale, I'll make sure I'll add a link to a good deal instead. Hit subscribe if you want to see another one of my videos, and click over here for another video that I've mentioned in this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.